Hi everyone, welcome to part two of our likes and dislikes video. I'm Brad. I'm going to take you around the inside of this 27 foot front bed, twin bed with a rear hatch international model. This is a 2023. If you don't know already, we had a 2021 year model, 30 foot rear bed international model prior to this, and we've had a number of other RVs. This is part two of our likes and dislikes video. If you did not see last week's video, part one, it's the exterior. Today we're going to do all the interior. This video is long. Um, if you're interested in a specific part of the rig, you can look down below in the show notes and you can see I got it broken down by sections so you can see any sections that you want to look at specifically or watch the whole thing through. I'm going to follow up next week, probably, or you know, two weeks. So all the feedback that I got from the first video and all the feedback I get from this video, I will go back and make a third video to answer any questions and follow-ups to whatever you are asking here in the comments. As always, if you need us for something or need our advice on something, please feel free to reach out to us via the contact us link on our website and I will respond to you as soon as I can. Let's go check the rig out. Up here in the bedroom, um, just working our way around, I talked about the windows on that side. I don't know why Airstream doesn't make both these windows the exact same, but they don't. Maybe it's an engineering thing, but the emergency escape windows over here it just has the red handles, which are the same as every other handle in the rig, but it has the little pull tab here for pulling out the screen. That's really what makes an emergency window is that little pull tab. I love the wraparound windows in the bedroom. In our old rig, we had the queen bed in the middle and we had floor to ceiling closets on both sides. And we like that from a storage perspective, but we love the open windows up here on both ends of the trailer. So Airstream, to my knowledge, does not make a floor to ceiling closet anymore. So regardless of the model, as long as it's a traditional looking Airstream, you get the wraparound windows on both ends of the trailer nowadays. They only make, uh, if you had a queen bed here, it'd be a little nice end table on both sides of the bed. Twin beds. This was something we debated over and over and over and over again. You know, do we like the twin beds? Would we uh, miss cuddling and sleeping with each other? Yes, we do miss that. But we do love the twin beds. I get to sleep and just kind of stretch out on my own. And they are more spacious than you would think they are. Actually, we have more room to ourselves in a twin, these twin beds than we did in the queen bed together because the combined width of these two things is wider than the queen bed was together and it's longer. So we've been very happy with the twin beds. Uh, I, I remember back when we first got the twin beds and the, like the second or third night we'd slept in this rig, Blair goes, you know what? I sleep really great over here on my side of the bed and there's one that's just me, but she has to deal with this fluffy thing and she has to deal with the piper hopping in bed with her quite a bit um but she she likes the cuddling and likes to hang out with them more than i do and she's the coldest human person i've ever met i'm the hottest person i've ever met so it's nice for me to be able to be over here and not be burdened by some other living being keeping me warm so i get to be cool on my side she gets to be warm on her side and we've been very happy with this arrangement there is an outlet up here that's really nice. This is our T-Mobile home internet box. Uh, it's an easy place to park it and it picks up pretty nice up here. That uh, In the back I mentioned that there's a um, USB outlet plug that we can use back there should we need it so we can migrate this thing and it has the velcro strips on the bottom. We can stick it to that wall back there but currently it's being used for USB-C outlets only because uh, the, the phone cord and um, watch charger, phone charger and watch charger cord that we both have are USB-C plugs. So what comes on both sides of this outlet or both sides of this uh, nightstand table is a USB-A type outlet. The newer models are coming with USB-A and USB-C plugs. So I may switch these out at some point, the ones that are wired into the rig itself. But the outlet up here is really nice. So for any one of you who may have like a CPAP machine or something along those lines, I need to plug it in. This is a good place for it. I have a phone stand up here. The drawer for storing of things. So in here we have a couple books, the night reader lights, nighttime glasses for watching TV, and charging cables and things like that are in here. 
I like the drawer. I like the space. Making of the twin beds is, is difficult because reaching over the bed to get particularly up here in this corner, the rounded corner, can be problematic for some folks, but it's not that big of a deal. We both love the storage boxes underneath. We both have two doors that open up, and you have the outside storage to get underneath these beds. So it seems like it would tip one would take away from the other, but it really does not. These these decorative pillows are the ones that came with the Airstream. Been very happy with them, except that you cannot zip off the cover to wash it. So we have to keep them clean in other manners. So not a big deal, but I wish Airstream would make all of the pillowcases removable so you can wash them. Your curtains up here, the downfall of them is they're white. The great part of them is they're white. But if you have dirty hands and you're touching them often, it's very easy to get dirty. Airstream says dry clean only. And I've made a whole video about curtain washing and cleaning the washings. You can go back and find that in our in our plethora of videos we have out there in the world. But you can remove these and you can wash them. I just wash them with wool light and let them air dry. Don't dry them because if they shrink, they won't fit. Um, but you can do that. And know that if you ever remove these curtains, these specifically, they are tapered. The, but the top is smaller than the bottom. So if you put them on upside down, you can't get, get them velcroed back again. So uh, be mindful if you do remove them. The mattresses in here are very comfortable. Uh, we've had no issues. And we did not buy any specialty sheets. All the sheets we have came from Costco or Walmart or Sam's Club. I don't remember which one of the things, but they're, they're standard twin mattress sheets. And we have no issues with them. They're a little bunched up on the front corner up here, but uh, the fitted mattresses, but otherwise if it's fine, no issues. People have talked about the mattresses sliding towards the middle and they've found all these uh, cool uh, built braces, if you will, and mattress things to let airflow in. These mattresses in our rig have never slid off. We've never noticed it. I do notice it at night when I get up out of the bed, the mattress kind of shifts side to side some, but I've never had it fall off the bed traveling. I've never had it slide off while I'm sleeping in it or anything like that. Uh, but I do notice a little bit of a shift in the mattress, but otherwise, not that big a deal. All right, over on this side of the bedroom, you'll see our what replaced. So this is from Air Gear. This is the Micro Air touch screen for your air condition and temperature control system. I'm a huge fan of this thing. Why I have this pen in my pocket is some people have found it problematic for touching the screen with their hand or their finger. So a stylus pen can be very helpful. I love the touch screen. I love the Bluetooth app. I love the Wi-Fi variant of it if you need to use that and control your temperature while you're not near the rig. Really, really handy. Love this. Sitting outside working on some videos and I heard the air conditioning kick on. Maybe able to hear it in this video, not sure, but I was able to use my micro air app to control the smart plug from air gear and turn off my air conditioner from right here sitting outside. So I didn't even have to go in the house. Anyway, that's a wonderful upgrade. We're very happy with that process, and I'm very thankful to have that on the rig. It's a easy touch touch screen that replaces your Dometic air condition control on your Airstream. It's a plug and play system. Very, very easy to do. Your dimmer switch on the lights here is fine, and your um, light switches in general are fine. This is something I put in when our new um, new rig it's just a touch screen to let me know where all of my power systems is going this really only comes into play when i am on battery alone or boondocking somewhere i can see the constant state of my battery i can see the power coming in from my solar panels i can see the power from my inverter i can see how much shore power is coming in how much juice is being used at any given moment and then it gives me a, a very good estimate and when this is connected when this rig is connected to internet via our t-mobile home internet I can see this from anywhere I'm currently located on the internet. This is actually, this is just a red film over here that I have for nighttime because those lights are very bright and I can't turn them off or dim them. But this is actually the on-off switch for the inverter. So the big Victron Multi Plus 2 inverter, this is the on-off switch for it. I can control that via Bluetooth, but it's always nice to have a uh, something to turn on and off. I put these back here in this closet because it's close to what I was working on and it was easy for me to get to. If you see most new rigs who have some setup of this nature, it's always in the dining area by the TV or on the other side of the, t you know, on the other side of the refrigerator wall. To do that, I would have had to remove the refrigerator. So this was a much easier option for me because I could run it up the closet inside this closet here, this standalone closet and 
be able to wire this thing together so it's really easy for me to do it here. Uh, I don't like having all these things in the bedroom, but it's fine. Uh, it's not that big of a deal. Just, that's why I cover it up with this red film here. The TV, the bedroom TV, it swivels. It's fine. We like it. No issues. I have an outlet on, I, oh, this is my side of the bedroom, but I have one outlet over here along with your TV outlet, and I have that little green light covered up with black tape. But that's your TV antenna app power booster and HDMI cable going to your TV. I wish that bedroom, that side of the bedroom had an outlet on it. I'll tell you what this coming to play. Because we have our USB-C plug outlet up here and the T-Mobile hotspot up here, I have both those outlets taken up. And I have an out extra outlet over here, unless I'm charging my shark vacuum here, which is an awesome thing for the rig. I've done a review on this as well, but it, it plugs in here and charges. Right now, our, our Dyson fan is plugged into that, but Blair was trying to use a a uh, heating pad the other day and she had nowhere to plug it in so we had to move some stuff around to get her to be able to plug her heating pad in while she was laying in bed at night but if she had an outlet on that side with her it'd be really great i understand why airstream didn't do it there's typically in every rig there's six outlets on the inside for a 25 and larger trailer so i have one here at the very front in the middle we have one at the back in the middle so right by the back catch and we have one here, one in the bathroom, one by the sink, and then one over by the TV. So they're kind of equidistant from each other, but it would be nice to have one more outlet in the bedroom here for just for things. One of our other favorite features about the 27 foot versus the 25 foot rig is this space between the mattress and the wall here and these extra closets. If this were a 25 foot rig, this wall would be up against the mattress, making it more difficult to make the bed and losing of storage space. Also, your closet, you would only get one of these on one side of the bedroom and not on both sides of the bedroom uh, like it is here because it, this side is the one that would be missing because it would push up against your emergency exit window right here So you'd only have a closet on that side of the bedroom and a 25 foot trailer Not a big deal, but it is it is a factor. So something for you to look at What we have stored here underneath this blanket are our zip D chairs I keep a blanket on them because when we drive sometimes they rock back and forth and I don't want them scratching the wall there So um, I just keep a blanket over them for storage purposes. Down below the Blair side, she has some shoes and a bag and a few other things at the end of her bed. All in all, the bedroom is great. Our storage locker up here at the top is fine. We like it. The bedroom's a comfortable place. All right, just outside the bedroom, and you can see both of our closet doors here. I have bins in mine with shirts and shorts and shorts and other things in here. And Blair has hanging items in hers. Either closet, can be done either way. So the shelves, when you're not in use, they just lay at the bottom, but they're, they're both can be used for hanging items or shelves. I just prefer shelves over that because I have enough hang, hanging area in our center hallway. Recently, just days ago, we added this full mirror here to our setup. In the bathroom, which I'll cover in a moment, there's the mirror in here in the bathroom is just one big giant mirror at the top, whereas our last rig, it was a swivel out little small mirror. So we had a mirror on the hall closet door in the old rig because of the layout, it worked out really well. On this model, Blair wanted something so she could see her outfits dressed while she was standing somewhere. And looking, standing here in the hallway, you could only see your, you know, so open this door all the way up. Here, looking in the bathroom, I can only see from here to here, no matter how far I go back. And as I get closer, I can see my face. I love the big mirror compared to the old rig, but it does not show me all the things when I need to see my entire setup. So we found these acrylic mirrors from Amazon. They're on our Amazon page, and they're just double-sided stucky stick tape to the, to the wall here, or to the shower door here. If they fall off, not a big deal. They're not gonna break, they're shatterproof because they're acrylic and they're not real glass. But they do scratch easy. But this works for us because I can now stand in the bathroom and use this. I can see from the, the upper mirror here, I can see my reflection on my back so I can look at my back. I cut my own hair quite a bit so I can use it to cut my own hair. So that's a handy feature having it right here. This did come with four squares, but we decided to only use three of the four. So that's why this here like this. Compared to the old rig, the 30 foot, the light switch was on the wrong side of the door. 
So if I happened to get in the shower and needed to turn the light on, I had to reach it all the way around the door. So this is on the correct side of the door. I love the big skylight up here. I have it closed right now because it, it is very bright if I open this up. In both the shower and the bathroom, the Max Air fans, which are on this rig compared to the old fans on the, the 2021 and older models, this roof fan, this vent fan is a much better option. I've had no issues with this whatsoever. Whereas on the, the gasket on the last one, I had to replace a number of times. So this fan is a much better fan. I like it much, much better than the old um, ceiling fans. This space in general is nice. Taking a shower in here with the bench seat, I like to sit down when I shower because it's just easier for me. Not that the roof is out of the, you know, a pain for me to use. I just sit down in that shower. Just, it's nice to be able to sit down and wash everything off. We don't shower in our rig too often. We do shower here on occasion, but not that often. Uh, we go to the gym or go work out almost every single day. And because we have a membership to Planet Fitness and a couple other nationwide gyms, we are able to use the shower facilities and water facilities there. So we don't use as much water in our rig and we just always shower when we're done with our workouts. Not a big deal. All right, welcome to the bathroom. Uh, I'm sitting on the toilet on purpose. I'm sitting here so I can show you that this counter space is in the way of my knee. And if the door were shut, my other knee would be against it, like giving me this much space. So. Even here, if I'm here, I have kind of a tight area. I put my elbows out. So if you are a large human sitting here, it could be problematic with the door closed. On that note, if you are looking for a rig, no matter the style, design, or size, or if it's an Airstream or not, that's irrelevant. But I encourage you to go use the space. Go sit on the toilet with the door shut and see how that feels for a while. Go pretend like you're washing your hands in the sink or stand by the kitchen counter and cook and, you know, look in the fridge and see what would fit in the fridge. And like, think about where you would put all the things you take with you. So where would your Instapot go? Where would your shoes go? Where would your hanging clothes go? Where would your grill go? Where would your chairs go? What Whatever it is that you do, use the rig and enjoy the space for a couple of hours before you decide on a rig. Um, this bathroom is significantly smaller than the last rig we had, and it's much less counter space than the last rig we had, and that's okay. It worked for us. It's it's okay for us. The towel rack back here is nice. There's a hanging towel rack over here. We have a, a command hook up top to hang these other towels from, and our broom is on one side. Our Swiffer is behind these towels. There's plenty of counter space under here. I don't really like where the toilet paper roll goes and the extra rolls are here, but it works okay. There's plenty of storage space in this in this bathroom. Way more than we had in the last one, even though it's a smaller space, particularly because of this big medicine cabinet up here. We've had a lot of friends who have this model and other people we've met through Airstream communities who say this thing pops open all the time when they drive. I think it's happened to us once, maybe twice, and we've got... Um, 2,700 miles, 2,500 miles on this model so far. So uh, we've driven it quite a bit. Our decorative plants over here in the corner, they're not real. They're just fake plants that look good because in this rig, they would get no sunlight because of the UV blocking windows. Our Himalayan salt lamp here is a night light we use at night to keep from having such bright lights on. The shelf up here is really nice. And other than the, the tight corners on sitting on the toilet, it's not that big a deal. My bidet that I put in, I love the bidet. I still use it all the time. Blair has still yet to use it. We have a trash can over here and a little rug sitting here as well. So small bathroom, but works very well for us. All right, here in the hallway area, we have our dual closet here. Up top, we have washing things like we have some blanket storage up here we have uh washing powder all the all the things for cleaning clothes are up here and a few other ins and outs and then we have our hanging clothes down below is our dirty dirty clothes bin and uh some food storage so tuna and things like that and cans and piper's food is down here this closet only has one light wired into it so we have a battery operated light fixture here. We also put these down underneath both of both sides of our bed, which has been a really nice addition. But the closet has plenty of space for us. Down below here, if you recall, 
watching any of our maintenance videos, we put an inline surge protector in here so I don't have to plug that surge protector up outside. So it's built in and it's underneath the closet here from rewiring because right outside of there is where the main power cable comes into the drain. But it's in here. Uh, it's been fine, no issues. I really like that inline surge protector so I don't have to worry about putting one outside. One of our favorite things about the 27 foot versus the 25 foot is this very large pull-out drawer pantry here. In our last rig and in the 25 foot, if you were to get this variant, it would only have the one that's about six or eight inches wide. This one is three times that and gives us plenty of space. What you have to be mindful of is you can't have too many heavy things in this drawer. We've never had it pop open. We've never had an issue with it, but if you were to get the gas oven option in this rig, your microwave would be here in this drawer. And personally, I think it's much too heavy to have that kind of weight in this drawer driving down the highway. But always make sure that it latches at the bottom and at the top when you open and close it. Our other favorite thing up here is this giant pantry space here. So in here is a new wave pressure cooker, air fryer, both lids and some cutting boards are all inside this thing right here. It fits very nicely. Up here are some, you know, Reynolds wrap and scouts things. So puppy pads that we use in the shower. If you haven't watched our animal video, it just came out a few weeks ago. Uh, we use puppy pads instead of cat litter and that, her stuff, her food, whatever else stays up here and pepper stays down here. This curtain here, I mentioned it on the other side. We typically close this curtain at night because we don't close these windows back here. Typically, we don't close these window curtains back here. We'd leave them open all the time unless the sun is beaming in or I'm filming a video and need something special for lights. But I like to close this curtain at night so it allows us to get up and use the bathroom. But specifically, the air condition or the heater. If I have the air condition on or the heat pumps on, I like to pump all the heat and all the air condition into just the bedroom and not the rest of the rig. So up these these vents up here, I close all the vents in the roof and I leave the ones in the bedroom and in the bathroom here open so all the air condition or the heat pump goes on that end of the rig. If we are using the furnace, um, I have on occasion bought up an old t-shirt, pulled off the grate for our heater, our furnace, particularly the one back there at the back, and I plugged that hole with an old t-shirt so all the furnace air comes into this port and the one in the bedroom so all the heat is on this side of the, of the curtain. And I'm not heating space in the rig that I don't use. That's one of the things that I've done. And it blocks out light. So once you close all the, the curtains up there and close this roof thing and close here, the bedroom is pretty dark. There is some light that escapes from the edges of the windows, but not that big a deal. You could sleep up there during the middle of the day. It's dark enough. Been very, very happy with the electric fridge, the all electric fridge. And if you're unaware, the ref refrigerator and freezer, both sections, both have their own individual compressor and you can set the temperature on both to different temperatures. But while they're running, they pull about six amps per hour each. So if you want to do some basic math here, if both of these are running at six amps per hour, that means I'm pulling 12 amps of per hour out of my battery. And if all my lights are on, I'm pulling a certain number of amps out, depending on the brightness level. If my fan, range fan's on, I'm pulling a certain amount of apps, amps. So you can do your own energy audit. We've done that with a battery shunt before. I made a whole video on what does this Airstream do on uh, power, battery power alone. And I did my own energy uh, use and I, t I talked about what, how much, how many amps everything pulls and how long I would be able to do that without replenishment from solar or being plugged into shore power. What I love about the electric fridge is the space. Like the freezer is huge. I have plenty of space in here, plenty of extra space in here. And then down here we have plenty of room for all the things. We go shopping at Costco and buy a big huge pack of chicken, a big package of steaks, a big salad box, sodas, whatever else. All that stuff fits in this fridge, whereas in our propane fridge, it was not near as much storage in the fridge part. So we do like this very much. One thing people neglect to do when they're on boondocking is to push the little night mode button here. So if I'm going to bed at nine o'clock at night and we're boondocking on battery alone, I push this button, hold it in, it turns itself on. Eight hours later, it's gonna automatically turn itself off. What it is, is it's going to reduce the amount of time the compressor is running and save battery 
at night when it's typically cooler. So that's why it's a night mode. If you have this type of fridge, uh, the Norcold electric fridge, there's buttons up here. The button for the shaded area is what you're controlling. So there's one with a large shaded area on the bottom for your fridge. And there's one for a shaded area small at the top. That's for your freezer. And you can control the temperature from one to five and those things. That little storage bin up here is just for mostly Piper um, things. And then down below the fridge, I have a storage box and there's nothing in it. All right, carrying on with our kitchen. Again, storage spot up here. We have a, a single cup coffee pot, a French press coffee pot, core coffee storage, and a cup storage. And I think I've talked about this already, but if not, we put wallpaper on the back side of this translucent glass here that the wallpaper we found matches the wood grain of this uh the cabinetry in here at about the same color so it's just wallpaper taped onto the back side of those translucent glasses i've seen people paint them with white spray paint uh paint them with different things so you can still see light through them but it does not allow you to see into the glass and it's translucent enough to not really see what's behind it but if something is right up here behind it you can see the thing touching the range hood has been nice um if you don't know this this vent screen pulls out and you can clean this off with clorox wipes or whatnot but if it's if your fan is never working there is a single glass fuse up in here that you need to look for if it's if it ever stops working for some reason and when you put this back in there's two little metal tabs here that goes into specific slots so make sure you don't bend those and if yours still has the blue tape all the way around it please remove the blue tape because when it gets hot and melts it's impossible to get off here is a knife block it's screwed into the wall we on our last rig i had command stripped it to the wall Never took it off. It was never an issue. Uh, but I did screw this one into the wall because I had enough had enough wall space to screw it in. Whereas in the other one, it was a different type of drawer here as the wall was a little bit more thin. The grate on the, on the stove here is fantastic. Remember, I replaced this grate, the Furion cooktop. So if you were to get the gas oven option, it came with this grate. If you got the convection oven microwave, it came with a much more wire-like uh, great that I did not like. This one is much, much better. This thing has a gimmicky, gimmicky blue lights around all these things. I, I turn them on to show the blue, but I, I think it's gimmicky and something I would never, ever use because it's, the blue light is harsh, very harsh at night. We mainly use this one burner. Uh, the pots and pans we have are fantastic, but they're, they're typically too big to use all three burners at the same time, and I really never had a need to do all that. Anyway, convection oven microwave is something we love and use all the time. I have on here a piece of red film. You can see I have the piece of red film all over the place. It comes in standard sheet size paper in a pack, and I just cut it out to fit what I need. But I like to cover up the things with the red light because blue light and white light at night messes with your circadian rhythm. So I'm a big fan of the health and fitness industry. So I cover this blue light up. I cover up our our power button out there, I cover up stuff in the bedroom with a red film so it's very dimly lit in here. One thing I don't have it on is our carbon monoxide detector here. There's a green light on the bottom of this thing. It's very bright. A lot of people cover that up, but I kind of use it as a hall night light in here so it's green and it shines down on the floor so not, not terrible, but um, this thing is bright and particularly the, the power button by the front hatch is bright. We love the convection oven microwave. I've used it on many, many occasions. We actually use it as a storage bin when we're traveling. This microwave slash convection oven slash dehumidifier slash air fryer slash defroster slash whatever the things are. So many devices. It works very well. It's only really, really great at a microwave. The convection oven takes longer than it would take a normal convection oven. Uh, the food dehydrator piece I've never even used, so I think that's a function I, I don't need. But all in all, I've been very happy with this convection oven microwave compared to having a gas stove. We put our paper towel holder up here. It's command stripped up. It's not screwed into the cabinetry. There's also a storage box down here below the microwave. It has nothing in it. And there's three pull-out drawers and one door that opens up at the bottom. And then nothing's in that door. So to be a smaller rig with seemingly less storage space, we have way more cabinets that are empty than we did in our 30-foot trailer. One other thing right here is that this is the electronic panel. 
your circuit breakers and your fuses. So AC, DC, power systems. Uh, if you don't know this, there's a tip, the red LED light that will light up on any of these and when it's out. And you should always have a separate spare set of fuses for these. And then your circuit breakers here. If you ever have one click off, you probably have to go all the way off and then all the way back on to make sure that it's uh, turned on back on the way you need it to be. This shroud around your convection oven microwave here, if you if equipped with one, there are there are six little screws in here. Please make sure those are tight. And then the same with all your cabinetry. As I was talking about lubricating the awning and things like that, at the beginning of every month, I check all the hinges on every door inside the trailer and on every cabinet. I just give them a little screwdriver, verify that they're all tight. And then because as you drive and things shift around, they do kind of get loose on occasion, but as long as you keep them tight. And if you over tighten them, you'll strip the screw out of the wood. So please don't over tighten them. Just make sure they're all tight. It's a very simple process. It takes a few minutes to go around the whole rig and check all of them. But your drawers, specifically on your drawers, there's little handles here that pop out and you can take the whole drawer off and you can take the drawer apart and you're able to check all of the screws inside the inside the awning, inside the compartment itself to make sure they're still screwed to the wall properly. Uh, so just one little maintenance tip for me. Please check all your cabinetry screws to make sure they're all still attached as they should be. What, the cover that goes over the sink. I like the cover. We use it when we're cooking. We use it for uh, setting out platters or if we're if we're entertaining folks we can put some dishes under the sink here and then we just cover it up. But the storage for the sink cover is, an, is not a problem. It's just a nuisance somewhat. It doesn't fit in this side. It would fit here in this side beside the trash can, but we keep it in our hall closet just because it's easy to get in and out of. It's convenient for us to get to, but we rarely put it in. We only put it in when we're cooking um, multiple meals together. So Blair's cooking one thing, I'm cooking another, and we need more counter space or when we're entertaining. That's really the only time we ever use the sink cover. We don't travel with it in. We put this paper towel holder up here. I've talked about that numerous times. The only thing that still really works here is the light switches and the sea level gauge for our tank monitoring and that such. But the, the um, MPPT control point here for the solar controller and the inverter those are dormant because I took those things out. I've talked about this many, many times. We've had it in a number of locations, but it's our indoor outdoor temperature sensor. Uh, one sensor is up in the propane tank and the other sensor is here in the device itself, but it gives you your humidity level, temperature forecast, that kind of thing like that. It's a really nice piece of gear. It's on our Amazon page. Here in the sink is something I really love and we haven't had it long, but it's nice. It's a baby bottle drying rack. They're pretty cheap. It fits nice in our sink or it sits up here on the counter really easy and it'll fit here beside the spigot or here beside the spigot so we can get it out of the way really easy. And it's just a nice place to drain stuff and keep, you know, when we wash dishes. We do have a drying mat that we use uh, that we put out here on the counter when we're washing large pots and pans and things like that. But that's about it. I've also talked about these baskets, these woven baskets up here for the Airstream. We have them for our cups and coffee cups and uh, computer equipment and then the bedroom for shorts and socks and whatever else. We have them in every single closet. They're, uh, they're super handy. And because of the curve of the roof, they don't slide around. They're malleable. I can fit multiple things in them and they don't scratch. The, the interior walls of the, the Airstream. So that's one of my other favorite things. You can see here hanging up is more of those hooks. We have three in the kitchen. I, I typically had, we have one on Blair's side of the bedroom and one on my side of the bedroom, but because of the, of the way the TV and the closet is in my room, uh, we just hung this one up here for our little love lobster and our flamingo. The range hood does a good job of venting air. This is a shade that is rarely, rarely used except when we're traveling on super hot days or um, trying to keep the sun out blocking something, but rarely is that shade ever closed. 
While I'm standing here looking at them, there, there are a number of roof vents in this area. And I've had discussion after discussion with hundreds of people about this. So many people online remove the, the vent from their airstream and then they take the plastic part out to get more airflow. And then there's other companies that make variant, variant sizes of airflow things to give you more airflow. And there's been a whole bunch of discussion about airflow coming out of the vents. Blair and I have never once had an issue with the amount of airflow coming out of these things. And that's just our opinion. Um, I have been in some rigs where they seemingly have more airflow and they've quieted down the air condition by putting some uh, real duct tape up in here and it's quieting some of that. It's a little bit lower on the decibel level. That's not something I've ever really been interested in or decided to do. I may, if I get bored one day, do it just to see what happens. But I do not ever want to remove the, the feature, the plastic feature in there that I can shut off one of these vents. And I'll tell you why. Not long ago, we were at an RV park that was a 30 amp service. So I decided to only run one air conditioner. Um, the one with a, this, the main air conditioner right here because it has the uh, soft start on it. In the off chance that we're in a park that only has 30 amp service and I'm only running one air conditioner. I could run both because my battery will take over, but it's not something I like to do unless I absolutely need to do. When you're only running one air conditioner, just know the air flows out of the whole rig. So there is one rectangle duct that goes all the way down this side and all the way down that side. And both air conditioners are tied into those ducts. And I really think about it like this. When this air conditioner is working, 80% of the air is coming out back here and 20% is coming out in the bedroom. And when the front air conditioner is working, 80% of the air is coming out of that end of the rig and 20% is coming out of here. So if I'm only running one air conditioner at a time and then I want the bedroom to be as cold as possible or as warm as possible, I can come shut off this end of the rig, shut off all these vents or vice versa if I'm only using this part. And I can close this curtain here in the middle and I can have temperature on one side of the curtain and temperature on the other side of the curtain. So therefore, I don't want to cut these. I don't want to cut these out because I like being able to use one AC and get all the maximum airflow I can into one section of the rig. This is Brad's opinion. So take it for what it's worth. Um, that's just why I choose not to take those plastic things out. The hooks here. Blair uses them. I rarely ever use them unless I hang a coat up for quickly coming in or out, but I rarely ever use those hooks. Down here beside, uh, this is the thing we added, it was our mailbox. It's on our Amazon page. I really like the mailbox. You can see all the keys hanging down there. We put our remotes in there when we travel or just to get them off the table, we put our remotes in there and what little bit of mail. You just got to be reminded to clean it out on occasion. And I have all of our spare keys hanging there. Uh, for the vehicles and for the the rig down here in the main kitchen cabinet area directly under the sink so you can see i have cleaning supplies up here under one and the sink kind of gets in the way of putting two tall of things but they'll fit on both sides and then down below we have our dish dish rags or our drying rags or hand towels and we have our pots and pans over here if you haven't seen the video on these stackable pots and pans, you are, uh, you're going to love them. They're cheap enough. They clean exceptionally well. We love the pots and pans. It's a hundred bucks or so for the set. And I'm a huge fan, uh, particularly in this tight space and that I can pop the, the handles off. But this is our very organized cabinet. <laughs> Not. And over on this side, you have the trash can here, which we really don't even use as a trash can. Uh, we have trash bags stored inside it with our various bags and things in here. Uh, these wires, these lines are all for the, the water spigot here. And that's about it over here. You can see our keys. The various light switches. One of the biggest issues with this battery button is it's super bright. So the same red film that I have over the... the Inverter controller in the bedroom as I put over this because it's so bright in here at night and these switches and dimmers are fine The awning uh, control is fine. It's all right here TV. I've talked about this at length that the sound quality is Not great uh, If you're not aware I have hearing aids that can't hear very well. So it sounds very echoey to me uh, I don't love the TV sound the TV is fine 
And you cannot, in this year model or previous year models, connect the TV to your stereo system. I believe in the 2024 models they have corrected that, but I don't know for sure. I've not been in a 2024 model to touch it for myself, but I believe it's been corrected for the 2024 year models. So the way we do it is I have a speaker back here. I have a whole video of me installing the speaker. You could put it on a shelf down here or connect it to the wall. I just have it wedged in between the TV and the wall with some command strip sticky thing so it doesn't scratch anything or slide around. It sounds way better than the TV speakers do, so we use that. When we want to watch a movie or want to have surround sound in the rig, it's, it requires a Bluetooth. So we have an Apple TV that we stream movies with or, you know, connect our computers and iPads and such to the TV with via the Apple TV. And with that, I can Bluetooth to the main speakers in the rig. I can also Bluetooth from my phone or my iPad or my computer and things like that to all those speakers. So. Uh, TV's fine. I don't mind the size of the TV. A lot of people complain that it's too small, um, which I get, but we don't watch that much TV. We watch the news in the morning and the evenings, and then we watch whatever, you know, streaming kind of movie things, but never that big a deal for us. I had this cushion removed before, and I'm going to remove it again real quickly to show you something in here that I like and dislike. This outlet right here against the wall, I've used my portable electronic device so this is something we really enjoy here it has six outlets you can turn it on and off it has usb ports down in the end but because there's nothing really convenient on that end of the couch to plug into this runs along this shelf here uh, quite well if you had a globe trotter it would be up here a wooden shelf would fit really nice but this cord's nice and plugs into the wall right there and it hides nice and well behind the couch cushions up there when not in use and we run the cord between the two cushions so they don't scratch the wall but when this cushion is here and in use if you lean on it too much it's very easy to push this anything plugged into here out and right now what's plugged into here is our speaker behind the tv but it's very easy to knock that knock that plug out I wish the plug were higher up here so it wouldn't be so easy to knock things out of it. And maybe, maybe it's a design feature that it's lower so it doesn't show as well and you can kind of do what I do with it, but uh, I don't know the answer to that test. It's just one of the things. These shades are really nice. Uh, know that you can see in the edges of them. So right there you can see. If you're standing outside looking in here at night, you can see the edges. I've seen people take those uh, black paper I don't know what they're called, paper clips, the big black triangle looking deals. And they put them here and they were able to put them inside here and, and they're able to close that gap. We often leave them here half shaded or full shaded. Uh, the windows are fine. Never had an issue with these. If we're ever using this into the couch to lay here and read, it's much more comfortable to remove that cushion. I have much more space here to use and it's much more comfortable to lay here and I would actually have more pillows than I have now, but it's a nice comfortable space to lay here and read. And I got the panoramic view of all the windows. The pull out drawer function for sleeping where those back cushions come down. It's very easy to set up and very easy to use. Uh, I've taken naps there. We've had people over who have slept in that and uh, been very comfortable. So never been an issue with that uh, pull, out, pull out bed. Let's talk about cushions for a second. These two cushions, these two seat cushions, are very nice, but they're very, very rarely used for us. People have complained that if you're sitting here, depending on the type of material your shorts are made of or your pants are made of, you will get the gradual slide going on. So that's one of the factors. If you have a globe trotter, it's a more textured material and more comfortable and seats a little bit lower. Me sitting here uh, before the cushion compresses, my heels barely touch the floor. As the seat compresses over time, my heels will touch the floor. I'm five foot nine, so not super tall, but anyone shorter than me, their feet are just gonna hang, not touch the floor. What I wish Airstream would do, and I'm gonna show you a picture of what this looks like. You can see the, the sewn line here doesn't line up on the very end because we use the two cushions on either side of the table way more than we use these two cushions. I wish Airstream would make four identical cushions so you could swap them around as necessary but the curved <laughs> rear part of the airstream makes that exceptionally difficult 
and I don't really know how they would do it. They'd have to have more cushions or more kind of the way they the way they're angled. It would be a lot different. So I don't know exactly know how to do that piece yet, um, or if they've ever considered it. But it would be really nice if I could interchange the four cushions that are here, the four seat cushions, because as those two get kind of worn down after sitting in them for a couple of days, it'd be nice to swap them to over here and use these for a couple of days and back and forth. Uh, so you wouldn't get all your saggy cushion. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. You can see the line here sewn and how the line on that cushion goes out because it's been uh, set in for so many times. And you can see how much farther that cushion sticks out beyond where these are. Uh, welcome back here to the back hatch area. I have, uh, there's a couple things I want to discuss here. First of all, I'll talk about the table. The table is wobbly. That's about the extent of wobbling. If you go to get up from the table and you push down on it, uh, things can be problematic. It's really problematic if you're drinking something here and it's full because it will slosh around. What you have to get used to is pushing yourself up off the couch using the couch and not using the table as a lever. If the table were a normal, not rear hatch table, it would be longer and connected to the wall here. Our last rig, the table was connected to the wall and we never put it down to travel, except maybe the very first time. Because it had multiple points of contact, it was something I was not really concerned about. Even though Airstream Manual says, always put the table down when you travel, we just never did with the old rig when it was attached to the wall. But because this has two legs underneath it, or if you had the globe trotter here with a wraparound seating, always put the table down or always take the table out. Never, never travel with the table sitting on these legs. Uh, we've put the, the legs have a storage spot in the closet. Sometimes we just put Piper's bed down here and lay them on the bed and put pillows and whatnot on top of them. But the table, you know, we thought it was going to be worse than it is. We've not been unhappy with the table. You just got to, again, you got to get used to getting in and out of here without pushing down on the table uh, when you're doing something. If you have four people sitting here uh, to eat, it's not super spacious for the person sitting here because you got this wall in the way, but rarely do we have four people sitting at the table. But it is spacious enough for two, uh, two people to sit here and, you know, have a plate. If I lean forward, I'm on one side of the, the hatch thing here, uh, but I don't know that we've had We've had people over for dinner many times, but we've eaten outside or we've done something else other than all four of us sitting here at the table one time. I'm a busybody, so I'm typically, I just stand up and eat and let everybody else sit down at the table and eat. You see this blue mat here? It's almost the same color as the cushions. I've had this since the last RV, uh, the last Airstream, because I like the color. And it keeps me from scratching the tables up and I'm able to use a mouse and able to use other things here without worrying about scratching the table. But it's just a, a mat. It's silver on one side and blue, the blue color on the other side. It's on our Amazon page. This is again a, a phone stand that I set here on the table to use my phone with. This camera, I did not talk about this in the last pet video that I made, but uh, this camera plugs in back here to our outlets that we have. I can set it up here on the cushion. From your phone, the smart app that you have, you can control this camera. I can pan around, I can make a wide angle, I can even talk uh, via the camera and if someone were in here, I could talk to them. But we just set it up here, uh, depending on where we are and what we're doing to make sure the animals are okay uh, in our rig. But you have to have a dedicated Wi-Fi or dedicated internet in your rig to use this feature. And we have the T-Mobile, which I've discussed many, many times over. We do put this table down every single time we travel. It goes right under these cushions here. It seems like it would be difficult, but it's really not. It takes a, a, a mere 30 seconds to take it, a, take it apart and put it down or put it up, uh, vice versa. I don't mind the rear hatch frame as much as I thought I would mind it. And part of that is because of these big pillows. So these pillows came from Lowe's just because the green in the pillow matched the green that came with the pillows in the rig. These are Airstream pillows. These are pillows from Lowe's. But if I want to sit here and kick my feet up to watch TV, this is not bad. This is actually very, very comfortable. Similarly over on that side, but that side you don't have the this extended part to sit in. So it's a little different sitting on that side than it is on this side. 
I call this the lounging side and I call that the working side. When I'm typically I'm working on the computer, I sit over there because it's more of an upright seating position. I don't have this lounge area. Whereas this side, I like to lounge and watch TV. But if you're trying to watch TV or watch a movie, Piper likes to get right here and her head's always in the way <laughs> of the TV. So you can hardly ever see uh, what's going on if you're trying to lounge. Other things about the hatch, your screen went down if you have if you have the screen down for example the hatch if the hatch were open right now and the screen's down like it is if i push these pillows against this screen i can push it right out of its track and that's scary the first time it happens you think it's broken but it's really not it's just regular screen that goes inside of a track it's not broken if it pushes out some um but it's pretty it's fine i've never had an issue with that it just goes right back in We've only, we've used the hatch many, many times with the screen down and I've not had any issues with bugs. And that said, there's an asterisk to that. I've very rarely been in a spot where bugs were super prevalent. There's more gap in the, the screen door by the main hatch than there is the gaps over here. So I've never had an issue with bugs coming in and out of this back hatch. The window shade for the back hatch it's fine, but you see that there's two points of contact here and two hooks down here. If I'm trying to do this from this side, I can really only hook it into one side at a time. I can play with it and might be able to get it in there on both sides like that, but you take one side comes out. So you have to work on both sides. Similarly, when you're trying to unlock and open this window, sometimes you can do it with one hand but you still have to go over there and hook that other side in. So it's not convenient. And leaning over the table to do it, it should, the distance is kind of an odd distance and put your body in an odd position to get to that, uh, to open this window. It's a feature, it's not a problem. It's just one of the things to consider if you're considering getting the rear hatch. I'll discuss this now because this is one of the major factors. This hatch was the major factor in us selling our old 30 foot rig and purchasing this 27 foot rear hatch. We went for many, many times over, and I, I think I said this earlier, but we went many times over camping and we said, would we use the rear hatch? For example, right now, I like having the hatch open, but it's not a space that I would use because it's rocky and it's, it's kind of at an angle compared to where our, uh, the RV spot we're in. But many places we've been, the picnic table has been behind the rig or we've been so close to someone on that side, we'd rather just use that back. And it's been a very nice thing to have and we've really enjoyed it. These little flamingo lights, we just hung them up using command strip hooks up here. They're battery operated, so I don't have to plug it in, which is nice. Speaking of plugs, there is one plug down here by the rear, rear hatch that's handy. I wish there were a plug over there by the main door. So down on the bottom below that cabinet or down somewhere down in that area, there should be a plug on that side of the rig. There is one up in the cabinet up here, uh, which is handy. And sometimes we have a cord running down to a computer or a cord running down to an iPad from up there. But I like to keep my T-Mobile hotspot up there and my home internet, the big the big box. I like to keep it up in this cabinet because it's out of the way. So typically both outlets up there are used. One's for the Apple TV and one's for the T-Mobile home internet. So typically both those outlets are taken. There's not really a way to use an outlet on that side of the rig. So this one over here is kind of used for that side of the table or this device that I put in back here, which is really handy. I just wish Airstream would put an outlet over there by the door on that side of the rig. The curtains, uh, we have them pushed this way because Scout likes to sit on that little shelf over there and look out the window and her hair gets everywhere as you've seen on pet videos probably. So I push the curtains this way. I would really prefer them to push this way because I can see more out my window here, but with her climbing up there and getting hair on the curtains, I'm not, I'm not a fan of keeping the curtains. Keep. I'm not a fan of having to clean the curtains all the time, so uh, that's why I push them this way. You have a speaker here and a speaker there, which is fine. If you have the globe trotter, the speakers will be up here and your stereo is inside the cabinet. Uh, but it's nice to be able to sit here and sit over there and watch a surround sound movie and both of us have a speaker right above us. It sounds really cool. And the the bass speaker is underneath that side of the rig, so it's you can feel it back here. Um, quite nice. This giant body pillow here fits nicely right in this little slot. 
And we've been very happy with that. Um, particularly when we put the table all the way down and we use this as a lounge space. And we really only do that when we have company over here uh, for multiple days on, on end so we can have a place for everybody to sit and hang out and kind of do their deal. But uh, that pillow sits right here and nests right here nicely and we leave it there quite often. It came from Walmart and it's just something we've had. I've got all the windows closed back here right now because the sun is beaming in the windows at the moment. But they do block the heat and block the light pretty well. All right, I'm going to lounge here just because it's the easiest way to show you. But this opening here is the intake for your gas furnace, which is on the other side of this panel. So one issue we have with pets is keeping hair out of here. So I sweep this area quite often, particularly during the winter time when we have the gas furnace running, but that's your air intake for the gas furnace. Note that and keep it always clean. The storage bin that's back here, if you're sitting on this cushion, you cannot open it uh, because of the pressure point here, but that's where we store things that are not um, not readily needed. That's on occasion needed. The storage spot over here underneath this side is where our games and stuff like that are, and it's a very very nice storage space. And again, we have Piper's toy bin here. Over on this side, this drawer is a handy drawer. It's our what we call our junk drawer. Pens and papers and envelopes and stamps and stickers and all that kind of jazz that goes in here. And then right here by your front door, I have a yoga mat, or, sorry, yoga block and a yoga mat. I have a, what I refer to as the night sun flashlight a foam roller, a can of butt spray, a fire extinguisher, and my fire extinguisher that I got from Air Gear. I love this thing. It's very fantastic. Uh, it fits up easily here and it takes up way less room, but I left the main fire extinguisher in here so we'd have two. And then I have a, a weapon for protection in here. Uh, it's fine too. The only thing is when you put stuff in here, that you want to store, you got to be mindful what it is because it will scratch this wall here, depending on what you have. One thing about the Airstream mat that I had, I don't know that I've discussed this. I used to talk about it with customers all the time or Airstream owners as I met them. But if you ever get water underneath the mat here and it's laying by your front door, please make sure that you clean it up. I don't know. This morning I walked in here. I, this morning I walked outside and I reached and grabbed the mat to clean off some dirt on it and I noticed it's wet underneath and I don't know how long it's been wet underneath I mean I just cleaned the mat two days ago so I don't know where the water came from but just a caution if it's a, if it's raining or if it's anything like that and water is coming in your door as you walk in and out or wet shoes or anything like that where you get water inside the doorway here and it gets underneath this mat it does not dry so make sure you pick the mat up and look at it on rainy days or if, you know, I believe this came from Piper's water bowl uh, that I kicked the other day. So I think some water got under this mat, but um, it doesn't dry. So make sure that you pick up this mat, that rubber, that rubber mat that comes with Airstream and this floor, nothing gets dry underneath that. So make sure you dry it out if it does get wet. One of my least favorite aspects of the Airstream is this plastic lock here. I have replaced these numerous occasions. I've never had an issue replacing them on a square door. So like most of the cabinets in this rig or all the cabinets in this rig are square. But in our last trailer, the, the sink cabinets were rounded. So that's the one I had most issue. And I've replaced both of those things four or five times, I believe. Uh, but this is one I broke here and this goes in our secret storage compartment below Blair's bed down there. Uh, that's that's been the only one I've had to replace, and I replaced it with two standard metal ones, and I'll show you those in a moment. But uh, these are the least favorite thing about the Airstream. They're the most problematic, and they break off. And it's the female end here. It breaks. There's a the way the the way the plastic piece moves back and forth inside this uh, housing here. It, it's easy to break depending on the way it goes in. So if it's not adjusted properly or it's not set right and the tension on it is sometimes it breaks. But this is probably the number one most breaking thing on an Airstream. In the bedroom here, Scout's hanging out on the bed, but 
in Blair's secret compartment that I made, I replaced the locks with these two metal locks and they're fit in there like that. And you've seen these on many, many cabinets. Because of the way this thing pulls in and out when you when you pull on the top of it and it leans, I believe that's the main reason that the, the last one broke. The nighttime. Um, I'm going to talk about everything from the twin beds to the mattress field to the pillows that came with it to the cabinets to the closets to the hasp on the cabinets to the sitting on the toilet to the back hatch screen cooking in the kitchen laying on the mattresses laying on the couches sitting on the couches the couch cushions the window shades pots and pans we use how we like the refrigerator where we put things in the rig empty cabinets that we don't use and some maintenance tips to help you keep your rig in the best working order.